Welcome back. Uh, it's still the morning brief right here on channels, television. Of course, uh, two days ago, the news space literally across the country was inundated with that very sad incident. Nollywood actor, Junior Pope, and uh, several members of the crew, about four or five of them passed on. They drowned in that river while, while filming, which is why that conversation has to be brought to focus as to safety on our waterways. And we have the general manager of Lagos State Waterways Authority, uh, here with us to help us out on this particular subject matter. But before we take uh, that conversation on to the next level, we have the breaking news that the Federal University uh, students, two students that were kidnapped in Federal University will carry have now, be, have now regained their freedom. So that's the breaking news we are getting that the students that were kidnapped, Federal University will carry in Tarabai have now regained their freedom. We're going to bring you details of that particular story uh, as soon as we get all of it right here on the program. So we're excited to see that those students are now off the hands of the abductors. But let's come back. Uh, okay, so that's in Taraba State. Wokari is in Taraba State, by the way. So just an update on this particular story. So the students have regained their freedom. We don't know yet whether they'll be reunited with their families, but that's the information we're getting from our correspondent in Tarapa State. Let's come to you, uh, Mr. Manuel, on this uh, first. I'm sure that uh, it, it's a sad development. We all, we all saw that, and so many questions were asked. Uh, but the generic ones were, why were they not wearing a life jacket? Some were saying the video showed, showed that the guy was driving with too much speed. What really, we don't know the full story. So everybody's giving their own version of the same event. What do you make of that situation and what could have been done differently? Well, obviously, it's very sad uh, initially when you hear these kind of things that happen. Um, but of course, like you said, clearly several measures were not in place. Um, very firstly, the very first thing that happens at every jetty is that there will be state officials uh, of the waterways, either state or federal, to ensure that basic safety measures are in place. Because obviously, there's the regulatory enforcement. There is also the passenger's responsibility to ensure that, am I safe on this journey I'm about to embark upon? Um, and of course, the boat operator themselves must ensure they adhere to basic safety measures. And um, in this case, we didn't see any of that, um, unfortunately. Um, on this incident and of course him doing the video as well you know speaking to the driver and telling driver slow down slow down slow down also speaks to the fact that the driver clearly was not even listening um to what he was saying well, it was basically you know i see like a fall down or like a this is just like a crippling of, of the entire system and clearly the system was not in place but now when you talk about system, are there agencies in charge of these boat drivers uh, or captains, whoever is on the sea uh, taking charge of a boat or a ship, whatever it is, are there agencies in charge of these people to ensure that safety standards are met, no matter how maybe they're in rural areas, wherever they are, the, ensure that safety is key? Yes, so um, basically there is a national body um, and a few states have a few state of authorities like we in Lagos have a Lagos State Waterways Authority which I work under as well uh, and the whole idea is that both the national and the state right, will work together to ensure that each of these points where there's water transportation um, all safety measures are in place so yes, there's meant to be bodies but in a number of states, well, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if that is the case i mean it's 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 a sad event really and and i know a lot of people are are suggesting that i mean we could explore waterways Absolutely. really yes. particularly for lagos yes. and now we're contextualizing in lagos and hopefully extrapolate it to other parts lagos because one there's a lot of traffic in lagos yes. and we could do well with the waterways and i know that there's some work uh, going on there but as a user now not a road user a water user <laughs> now user. what are the checklists what are the things i have to tick off before and before even thinking about getting into whatever uh means of transportation it is i am getting into on the water what are these basic things i need to tick off that list before i get into yeah the very first thing i would always say is the life jacket now this life jacket most times are provided by the operator or you have your own personal life jacket and you own your personal life jacket and you decide to take your personal life jacket on every journey mm -hmm. because you see 
generally um, research has shown that water transportation is actually the safest mode of transportation because of that life jacket it we is have accidents yes we have accidents on the road every day you might not hear about how many accidents happen on the road every day but immediately any accident happened on the waterways trust me the news spreads quite fast so that life jacket is the singular most important thing you must have on that um, on that journey. Sorry, let me just <laughs> let me just butt in quickly. So some of us or some people don't trust the water, whether you have a life jacket or not. But I need to put it on record: once you have a life jacket, you can never drown. You will be safe. Yes, you know until of course rescue. You said definitely. You're attacked by a shark. Or something. But ex oh, exactly. <laughs> no, so dysfunctional life jacket. Yes, that's because another. There are point. also cases yes. of dysfunctional yeah. life jackets yes. Yes. where many people have life jackets that have stayed over ten years in their boats yes. and they do not know that when you deploy it, it can't work. Yeah. So so. So, so you know that's why you said I was, of course, I was coming to the steps. So mm -hmm. that life jacket is the singular most important thing you must have for every journey. Now, what, what then, because that's passenger's responsibility, that's also operator's responsibility. Now, what will the regulatory bodies then do? We do what we call a biannual inspection twice. Now, check the boats and also check their life jackets. If you find any life jacket that doesn't meet the standards any longer or are worn out, you confiscate them. So of course, they will pay fines for having those life jackets, but the state government understands that transportation sometimes will be subsidized one way or the other. So the state government every year donates life jackets to these operators, apart from the fact that they should buy those life jackets themselves. So with those checks, you find out those life jackets, which obviously, and of course, we rely on passengers telling us, if you see something, say something. I went on this boat today, this is the name of the boat, he has confiscated life jackets, immediately he gets to his point of destination. We then have state government officials, which are called water guard cops. They are the ones who look at those life jackets and say, well, you have this life jacket, this boat is not gonna be allowed to move anymore until these life jackets are replaced. So um, the checklist, so yes. um, life jackets. So life jackets, tick. Um, tick. And yeah. then also, of course, the boats, of course, having done inspections previously as well, yeah. um, the state government officials at those jetties are ensuring that there's one, there's not overloaded on the boat. Right. Uh, secondly, as well, you have your life jacket well strapped on and encourage the passengers, because a lot of the time, passengers wear and when they get on the journey, they unbuckle. You should not unbuckle your life jacket. Your life jacket should stay on you till you get to your destination. Yes, some people say, I tend to get hot, but look, think about the journey. Do the journey, and when you get off, you can take off your life jacket. How about being preventive? Uh, because prevention, they say, is better than cure. Absolutely. Um, since we're talking Lagos, let's, let's stay with Lagos for a bit. So I can see from this picture, literally every other person, except the gentleman behind the man who is wearing the easy yeah, the long, uh, he actually has a life jacket. I yes, think it's been obstructed. It's probably not a, an orange one, it's probably a, a, a yeah, well, dark okay, one. Okay, I, I hope so. Yes. So, <laughs> it, it, is it that does the state government ensure that before any boat moves, yes, everybody must be on a life jacket? Most definitely. Because that's the beginning. So most talk, most to us, to, 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 talk to us about that. that process. So, basically, what happens is that before you get onto the boat, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, you're coming in through the building. That's if he has a building. It's called a terminal if he has a building. But without, a, without the building, it's not called a terminal. It's called a jetty. Now, once you walk onto the platform, before you get onto the boat, you are handed that life jacket so that once you are seated in the boat, you are wearing that life jacket, right? And because you're wearing that life jacket, even you as well, you feel the fact that, oh, I am safe on this journey. And that's very, very, very important. So the prevention, like I said, will still be the fact that you must ensure that you're wearing a life jacket and you've strapped it properly. And that's why we even have officers on us on our jetties to ensure that everyone has worn there. So if they see any person that passing them and they haven't you're not going to go until you strap that jacket. And generally, there's been a 95% compliance across Lagos State in terms of wearing a life jacket because over the years we have emphasized on this as well. Let's go back to one picture I saw on the screen where it was an overcrowded boat. If we have that picture, yes, that's it. So if you say that um, people, the agencies who watch this and ensure it doesn't happen. I remember there was a time when cars used to be overcrowded. There used to be like five people at the back, two people in front. Yeah. But government ensured that one person sits in front and now it's just three people at the back. And right now that is still in place. It still happens till this day. Mm -hmm. Why can't it happen for the waterways where specific number of people are to enter a boat and it's not this overcrowded? Because this, is, this can easily capsize. 
Well, I, to be honest, I can't verify this picture is Lagos. Actually, it's Lagos. <laughs> no, it might not be. It looks like Lagos. There was, a picture, Lagos, there was a picture that was, that was trending about a year, a year ago with small, I don't know if you saw it, school children. Yeah. And they were saying it was Lagos. Apparently, it wasn't even Lagos. Wasn't, so yeah. I'm not saying that these things will not happen. However, generally, on the boats, you would know from the boats what, how many people should sit on each row. And their seats, basically, in the boats, if you look at the boats. But these ones are the ones where you have the wooden. Um, platforms and those platforms you know how many people as well should be on those boats i remember i said the state officials on the jetties will look at all of those boats as they're going and be able to stop any one of them and be able to say look this is what it, and of course we started to enlighten the passengers a lot more if you see something you must say something complain i'm not happy i'm not happy with the uh, standard life jackets i noticed a leakage uh, on the boats and of course be able to send a message or call a number because we have uh, emergency numbers as well, which you can obviously call us on and then we can obviously respond much quicker. Um, yeah. So there's there's really no excuse for uh, waterways to not be manned by state officials. Absolutely. Every one of them, or each of Everyone those waterways of should have us, yes. uh, um, should government be. officials. So it calls to question what's happening across board as yes. well. Speed limit. Mm. So I have my odometer on my car, for example, so I can see my speed limit. Even if I'm a passenger, I can peek and say, no, this man, you're driving beyond 80 if I'm on the third million bridge, yeah. uh, that is. But for boats, what, what's the speed limit? What should the speed limit be? How do you know when the boat is moving too fast? You obviously can't jump out at that point, <laughs> but uh, what should be the mentality? Well, generally, um, at every point um, on the waterways, right? Different locations have different speeds and they're actually called knots. So you say six knots, eight knots, 10 knots. That's how we describe mm -hmm. the speed limit. So different areas have different speed limits, right? And these are things that obviously at sessions where you have with the boat captains and because they're both called boat captains and some of them who have their own, um, like um, their own conductors are called deckhands. Mm -hmm. Now at, at those training sessions, they are, they're obviously enlightened on what is the safety and what is the safety speed, what's the speed limit for this particular area in which I function in. Mm. So they would tend to know those speed limits. And when you're on the boat, you as well would know. And of course, it happens a lot of the time because remember, these operators as well are trying to get to the destination quickly. And not only them, we even have passengers who are telling them, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, hurry up. I need to get to this place. And we always advise that passengers should not do that. And operators just don't always listen. Don't listen to if I don't listen to passenger. If you have any problem with any passenger, please report to us and let us know that this passenger told you and you are telling them no, I will not do this. Especially happens because, for example, I'm sure I don't know whether, but you know, Ikorodu to the island, which is a very popular route on a weekday, is just 25 minutes. Um, so easily, if I leave Ikorodu at seven o'clock, I will get to the island well before eight o'clock. And sometimes if I get, if I now, if that means that if I want to get, that means I need to get to the jetty at 7 a.m. as opposed to getting there at 7.30 I'm wanting the boat to make sure it speeds and gets there before okay. 8 o'clock. So they are, we also get um, those kind of things. But generally, the speed limits would always be assigned, of course, by the authorities based on the particular location. Mm. That is. So Just, let, let's talk about when these incidents occur. Yes. What should be done? Okay. So one of the things we've realized that I'm sure you know this is the age of technology. Uh, and Lagos State, apart from the fact that we've ha we have the um, personnel at the jetties, we've also deployed the use of technology as well. So we have the first of its kind. It's called the Waterways Monitoring and Data Management Center, which is situated in Falamo. And what it does is that it enables us to be able to monitor real time what is going on around strategic jetties. Um, because from those jetties, you have a camera of about 2.5 kilometers, which can see the long range haul around those jetties. Now, immediately an incident occurs, right? Usually, of course, you know, there's a lot of panic. This would happen. So what will usually happen is that a call will usually go through, of course, an emergency call. Now, that emergency call will go to the 767 or 112, or even though we have our own direct lines as well. And once those calls come in, the first thing is usually on the waterways. Now, waterways has different users. You have the dredgers, you have the fishermen. There will always be someone around who as well might be able to respond as the first responder. However, once we are alerted, we have what we call search and rescue, a search and rescue team, which will then go out to be able to ensure that they can then rescue those who have been faced with those situations. And of course, Lagos State, as an uh, obviously working with several other agencies, also working with Lasambos, which is obviously the health management aspect of um, um, of that of that service, are able to then deal with any 
um, victims, of course, from those incidents. So the search and rescue team is able to take them off the waterways, get them onto land, and then Lasambos takes it from there. So the most powerful, so 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 in terms of what you've asked, the simple question is the simple answer is that we're able to have our search and rescue teams respond when those emergencies occur. So when emergencies occur, and um, maybe the captains, as you've called them, do they have punishments that they have to suffer? when they are guilty, for example, of putting a person's life at risk or in danger, are there punishments, proper punishments, to ensure that they adhere strictly to instructions when next they're giving those instructions? Yeah, most definitely. I think just even over a year ago, one of the captains who caused the untimely death of about 15 people was sentenced to death. Um, yes, yeah, so there, there, there are those measures. But look at what happened. It's almost like the, 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 downfall, driver, the downfall driver the other day it merely happens they just they know that they, what they've done is bad so they, they run, they run. Yeah. so the same thing with the waterways as well because when it happens as well they want to escape so what we obviously want to start uh, starting to do now is of course the data and of course you must have referees you must have people who stand for you so those people as well will have to have to be held accountable mm. because when you escape then you'll be held accountable for most, most definitely that's what happens good one two issues i yes. want to quickly raise there's been controversy around the carry cards introduced yeah. the extra charges card maintenance insurance and people are like looks like you're charging us extra and i know you have to respond to that but i want you to quickly speak to uh, communities around riverine areas so when accidents happen the communities sort of take charge and say well there is a certain spiritual power here that we need to appease you have to maybe bury somebody if i mean in sad cases of death or they say there has to be some sort of ritual and they basically take charge is that existent here how do you handle those because they have their strong beliefs and they believe if you don't do that they'll have repercussions. So how do you handle that? Well, obviously, we won't speak to against that because obviously it's tradition. But one thing that is key and, of course, um, coming to bear, and we must realize that, you know, this thing, uh, you have to constantly keep looking for ways to improve things. Uh, it just shows that even at our communities, we need to do a lot more training. Um, for our people, because obviously the, sometimes they will need to learn the basic, um, you know, things like CPR and how do you quickly administer CPR if you are the one who is there and everyone across board should be able to understand what basic CPR is. So I would say, of course, no really way tradition, but the first thing we must realize that people, when you find out the 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 victims from those kind of incidents. CPR has to be administered immediately, of course, we have to help people and make sure. What if they want to way. take to a yeah. shrine instead? Well, you know, uh, obviously, you, I mean, you can't stop that at that point in time because obviously it's, it's almost like as if you are going, you're going to go against the crowd. But, you know, the first thing should, what should be done, basics that should be done for them will be basic, the basic CPR. Um, but ensuring, most importantly, like I said, when you have the water areas, ensuring that there are officials there to be able to at least put things in order uh, and make sure things are in place. Cowrie Can you cars. respond to the cowrie stuff? Okay, so you said you wanted us to do this. Yeah. Just, yeah. So, so, so let's look at this, right? Now, why have we introduced cowrie? Um, and why is cowrie there in the first place? You know, and cowrie is, 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 is the one. It's the system on the road transport, which is currently being used on the BRT. It's the only system on the rail service, both the blue line and the red line, right? It's only natural that as well, it should come on the water. So there's an integrated system. However, now, one of the things obviously which we hadn't done over time was with water transportation, there had to have been, of course, the insurance cover. So that whole, that extra charge, one is the insurance cover, two also is a maintenance fee for the company. The company is not a charity. The company has to provide the service. So that is the charge, now the extra charge covers both payment for the company and also for insurance. And this it's is- part, It's part of a subsidy because there, there had been some sort of price reduction, yeah. percentage reduction. No, that's, like, that's what happened on the water. It's because the stakeholders initially were adverse to cowrie. So until they stabilized with cowrie, and ensure that, okay, you adopted the carry because it's told, look, carry is coming in, one, for the operator, it's going to help them. There's a lot of their, you know, uh, revenue leakages because these boat captains with cash, they tell you, I carried only 17 passing, I carried 20. Now with carry, there's not, not, nothing like that any longer. There's also the idea of digital manifest as well because now you know who exactly was on that okay. boat. So it's going to benefit everyone in longer. But, you know, initially when you hear an extra charge, the first thing you say, this, but people are actually doing it and people are actually paying it. Well, it, it seems Lagos has gotten a few things right. Uh, we hope that across the country, uh, this will be replicated. Maybe uh, some other time we invite other 
other states of mm -hmm. the federation to see what they are doing. But we must thank you. Thanks. And we will have to invite you to talk about the different areas and waterways and all of that. Within Lagos states. Within Lagos especially. Because I know the popular ones. Uh, yes. So maybe there are other ones we'll also talk about. Oluwadami yes. Lola Emmanuel is the General Manager, Lagos State Waterways Authority. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.